Hello YouTube friends. So this is the box that formerly contained this spool. This is the Iriron Ultra Silk Bronze PLA Filament. This stuff prints amazing. I've been posting pictures on Instagram and on Facebook showing my friends all the prints I've been doing with this filament. It's amazing. I've got a build plate full of prints. I can't wait to show you guys. So let's stop there, do the intro, and I'll show you these amazing prints, how they all came out, and talk about the settings. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back friends. Well, this is my channel where nerdy is cool. My name is Paul. If you've never seen my channel before, well, this is where I talk about 3D printing, prop making, you know, BB-8, R2-D2, Stormtrooper suits, Batman suits, you name it, I'm into it. So welcome aboard. If you're not a subscriber, you like what I'm doing, or if you've never seen my stuff and I've kind of caught your fancy, hit the subscribe button down below. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. Speaking of cool stuff, this filament is amazing. I mean, I have bought all kinds of metal toned materials and they've always been kind of a disappointment. But this stuff, first of all, it prints very easily and the bronze looks amazing. Now, I paid for this with my own money. Yeah, I got it on Amazon. Uh, it was about $29. I'll post a link down below so you can find it. And as you can see from these prints, I mean, it looks really, really good. I was really impressed at how well some of the first prints were going and then I decided, you know what? Let's push it and go for the big ones. So one of the first things I thought after I did a simple XYZ cube, I thought this looks really great. I went ahead and did the usual Benchy and I'll give you a couple close-ups of that. And the Benchy came out fantastic. I'm seeing a little bit of ringing. I'm still tuning in my machine a little bit. Looks like I gotta adjust my acceleration and jerk settings a little. Um, the belts are fine. So I, I know that this is a newer printer to me so I have a few tweaks to make. But outside of that minor issue, everything else came out great. One of my favorites, once I started showing people this bronze filament, they were saying, you should print an Oscar. So, <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my school teachers, and all of you. Uh, I, 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 this, this means so much to me. So, no, but seriously, I mean, look how good this came out. And I'm gonna give you some close-ups here too. I mean, I, I was tempted to go with, with a bigger size, but I was running low on filament. And uh, this came out super, super good. So over on my mini factory, there are lots of excellent models you can choose from. Robber, I'm sorry, Rober Rollin, I believe his name is. He made this fantastic two-piece, you know, stand and then the uh, Mandalorian here. And uh, I was just fascinated how well this came out. I'm gonna run out of adjectives saying awesome, fantastic, neat, but I mean, this filament really pops. And uh, I'm gonna give you a little close up here. And I'm not sure how well the uh, DSLR will focus on that, but I'll give you a better close up here. Uh, this was an excellent print. It came out without any issues whatsoever. I was curious about some of the details along the belt and the strap as well. But as you can see in the close ups here, no issues whatsoever. Keeping up with our Star Wars scene, I came across this model by David Osman, and this is the Darth Vader. And what's interesting is you look at this and you start to think, well, with the helmet and everything else, this must require supports. It does not. It, it prints just like this, on, almost laying on its back. And the details that he put in the model, I mean, the helmet is perfectly round and shiny. Uh, and inside the helmet, you know, where you would expect some troubles with supports, um, the, the grill on the uh, face shield and such like that on the helmet, on the top and the bottom, uh, the chain that goes across the cape, no issues whatsoever. I mean, it looks, I'm sorry, here I go. I'm running out of adjectives. But this is one of those prints that when I show people, they're like, ooh, can you make me one? So uh, a very, very good model at uh, my mini factory. Again, David Osman, and uh, you can check that out. Something that I don't do a lot of is the spiral vases, or would that be vases? Anyway, uh, I don't do them very often, and I came across a model I downloaded a long time ago, and I thought it'd be interesting to see how well this pops with this kind of material. So I doubled the size of the model, and uh, well, I'm gonna to try to spare you guys all the adjectives I'm struggling to use here, but uh, uh, the effect is really, really quite something. 
Okay, it's no secret, I'm a cat guy. As a matter of fact, I'm sure in post-editing here, I'll find a cat running around the background here. Aha! But two of my favorite models, this is a kitten model on Thingiverse. And uh, of course, what I like about this model is that you have a lot of the little puffs of fur sticking out. And it doesn't require support, uh, but if your printer has some issues with some of the finer details, uh, you could get some blobs and zits. Uh, with this material, uh, we didn't have that issue. Again, I'm not sure how well this is gonna work when I move this closer to the camera and what have you, but uh, we'll definitely do a close up here separately so you can see that. Uh, another model that's been a favorite of mine has been the CR10 uh, Good Luck Cat because so many of these wound up being headless because they had the bad G code on the SD card. And uh, as we can see, the, uh, the Good Luck Cat uh, did a good job coming out. And again, I apologize for my camera being wonky, but we'll get a good close up here so you can see how smooth that came out. So when you have a metallic colored filament and you're a sci-fi guy, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it, I couldn't resist. This is the one from Star Trek Voyager. Uh, granted, I don't have the magnet and such here where I can pin it up, because that would be just bad on a Star Wars shirt, right? But uh, a nice job done here on the uh, small emblem. I had the need for something functional. I've got a bunch of USB drives all over my desk, so I thought, well, let me print a holder, because if this material isn't tuned just right, then there's no way that my USB drives are gonna fit into the openings here uh, that the USB drives and the SD cards go into. And well, good news, it printed it perfectly. It's a nice, obvious uh, color. Uh, I still got a little bit of the little ziggies here showing up. I think, again, that's fine tuning the settings on the printer, but uh, everything fits in there really nice. And my USB drives aren't, if you were, on my desk again. Okay, so I'm sure some of you guys are going, okay, that's nice, it prints big models, it prints little models. How does it do in the real test? So I had it do one of these 3D printer tests where it does the overhang and it does the bridging and uh, the holes and uh, the retraction and all those issues or <laughs> potential issues. And uh, I'll let you guys have a close up of that. And what you'll notice is that it looks like at about 50 degrees or so, that's about when my part cooling fan has some issues uh, you know, with the overhangs. But with the bridging, it did an amazing job. I had no issues whatsoever there and everything else looks really good. Um, depending on how you look at the text, again, a shiny bronze filament like this, if you have anything wrong with your printer, could magnify it. And I'm seeing that with uh, a couple of these prints where I have text involved. Okay, so you're probably wondering what kind of magic that I have to pull to get these kind of results with this filament on this printer. Actually, not much at all. The stock profile that I found on the Facebook group uh, for the Air One Thinker SE, uh, I've been using that. I haven't made any real changes outside of I updated my firmware so I could use the BL Touch. But temperature wise, I'm printing these at 210 degrees Celsius. Uh, my bed temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. I'm uh, making the first layer at 212 degrees Celsius. I like to have that first layer to be a little bit hotter than the rest. Uh, and then part cooling fan is 100% after layer one. And really that's all, <laughs> that's it. That's all the magic I did to get these kind of results. Okay, so this is kind of a short video and a short review, but I think the results say it all. I mean, uh, it's $29 for a one kilogram roll. And uh, as far as metallic filaments go, I think you're gonna find it very easy to print with. Okay, so if you find what I'm doing interesting, you can also find me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course my website, where nerdyiscool.com. If you wish to help me and support my channel, there is a link down below where you can donate through a PayPal link. And if you don't, that's okay too. Uh, that's it for this time. I thank you guys for watching. I just received the gold version of this filament. So I'm dying to try out some C3PO type parts to see how well that pops. So that will probably be our next video coming up. So thanks for watching. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool.